Okay, since we have a quorum, let's go ahead and I'll call the meeting to order and we'll start with the, is there anything you need to do, Nicole, before we get rocking? No, you guys are good. We're recording the meeting. Um, so it'll be uploaded as soon as we can within the next couple days to YouTube and Longmont Public Media. Um, thank you, Steph, for helping out again tonight. Um, there's Anne. So we'll continue to monitor the waiting room, you guys, and let people in. Um, so if you need anything, just holler. Okay. It's terrific. all yours. Thank, thank you. you. Okay. Uh, okay. Is the meeting has been called to order, and is there any public to be heard? No, there is no public to be heard. Thank you. Then let's go ahead and move on to approving the minutes for both the August thirteenth, twenty twenty meeting, and the September third, twenty twenty meeting. Is there a motion to approve those minutes? So moved. Thank you, Jake. Second. Ann raises her hand. Ann is seconding. Second. Uh, any questions, corrections, anything like that? Yes, Graham? Uh, I had a question about, let's see, what is it? Um, see, it's the motion that passed at the end of last meeting. Um, where we approved adding a question to the agency applications about equity. That part I'm, I recall very vividly and this seems accurate. The part I'm not clear about, which I would ask the board to verify for me, is the um, adding equity goal area under the self-sufficiency and resilience priority area. And that struck me as maybe a little bit different than what we were talking about. I thought we were saying adding an equity goal under each of the priority areas and not just the self-sufficiency. My recollection is that we were going to add the Boulder equity area to self-sufficiency and not one individual. I thought, but that's my recollection. And do you recall what the intention, I thought it was also under each area we were going to ask what they were doing to, um, to support equity. Is there, so we've got a, we got a split decision on the board right now. Anybody else have a recollection? Caitlin? That's my, oh, oh sorry. Caitlin yeah. and then Jake. So I think there were two different things we talked about. And I think this is what um, Graham is thinking of is we talked about adding a separate bucket for equity. We also talked about adding a separate bucket under each of the categories. Um, and I think what we ended up deciding was to add that bolder question that El Eliberto um, said. There were those two areas where we were not allowing people to specify those in their application. And we wanted to add a question to the application about how they would deliver it equitably or, or multiple questions around that staff were going to research of the best way to ask them how they were going to do that. But that was separate from the question of the different buckets. Um, and okay. was more about that list of 14 areas. I think we did 14 out of 16 and we said we should add the other two that Boulder also does. Jake? Yeah, that, that, that's roughly my recollection, uh, Mr. Chair, as well, is that we had the long conversation about adding the bucket. We ultimately came to a split decision that that, that vote failed and what we decided to do uh, well, by the, was to add the equity issue to each individual bucket to use that term to each individual area and then to take the bolder question as well but i think the intention of the board was to ensure that equity is measured in each one of our different areas i think was the intention good catch graham okay any other feedback on that and i, I noticed you had unmuted and then i spoke over you no, it's fine. <laughs> okay. Um, I don't actually remember, so I'm trusting Jake, to be honest. Okay, so if, so it sounds like the intention is different than what was captured in the minutes. Um, I'm not sure I, I looked to some direction on how to best reconcile this. We can amend the minutes and then approve them at the next meeting. 
or we could have a motion to approve them with amended language. Uh, it's, I'd rather not do that because I think it's confusing enough, everything that we just walked through that probably the specific language is really gonna matter. Um, Alberto, do you have a sense of what might work best? Or Karen? So, um, so I would say that if, because when you look at the motion that we think we passed, so maybe, maybe we just clarify where there is confusion or so that we can figure out how to yeah. change it. Because I think it's probably best to, um, you know, make the changes to the minutes and adopt the approved okay. minutes with amendments is probably the easiest way to do that. The longer we wait, the fuzzier we get. So, so it seems like that um, in looking at that particular uh, set of minutes that um, that the it sounds like the first part of that is is correct that you know that that we accept um, Eliberto's suggestion of adding the equity goal area under self-sufficiency and resiliency priority so that was mm -hmm. that was the bolder the bolder option Does that makes sense yes um, and 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 then adding an equity question to the application, which is what we really brought back tonight, which yeah. we understood would, would be that instead of just having a, an area where we address equity, um, that we include that in the application so that, that we're looking at how they are providing all of their programs and services in an equitable manner. So, so I think we are, aligned with the intent mm. but maybe we didn't capture it in the minutes in the way that that is clear well i would offer or that maybe it is clear i don't know perhaps we left um it might be okay that it's not precise because i think we are going to discuss that tonight and Tonight, we can give more specific direction to which, you know, it's included, in, for instance, in all the priority areas, and it shall be included in this way, you know. But I think what we said is that we wanted someone to be able to apply for, you know, if, if what their program is doing is about um, equity, that, that they can apply for that. And, and, and what we said is this, and there's a, an existing goal in um, under self-sufficiency and resiliency, which is what the city of Boulder uses. So that, so I think as an example, so if El Comité wanted to, mm -hmm. or Intercambio or someone, because that's kind of their purpose, that they would have, they would have an area in which to mark and say, this is what our program addresses, is this particular goal area. So I think we said that was already in the application and that made sense. Um, and then what we wanted to bring back tonight was what kind of um, equity questions do we want to include in the application so that um, we so that we're looking at how agencies are addressing equity in a more broad uh, kind of across all aspects of their operation so I think that's really what we're going to bring back and talk about tonight okay Caitlin I would just add I think as I'm reading the minutes and hearing what Karen is saying um, when we at, said to add those two things from the Boulder area, um, I don't think that I realized from the slides that we were looking at that those fell under self-sufficiency, that they were part of that goal area, which may be where the confusion is coming because they were, it was like 14 goal areas, but they weren't necessarily subdivided into our like big buckets. I, I don't really have, I mean, we can talk about whether we want to change that. I, I don't think I made the connection that it was, that those were going to be subdivided and that this would be under that. So maybe that is where the, so the, the minutes are actually more precise than what we were talking about <laughs> um, versus less precise, um, which is fine. Um, I think that's, so I'll just add that that was where my confusion, oh, hearing that helped identify that that's where I would be confused on it. Okay. Good too. Okay. Alberto? 
So just as a reminder, so the goal areas are what are the drop down um, goals that um, the agencies can choose from on the program level of the application. Then the self-sufficiency is really the back end uh, or back office, for lack of a better word, a bucket where we have categorized these goal areas. Um, that, that's the relationship that exists between um, the two. Okay. So the question related to the minutes really comes down to is the motion as it's reflected here inaccurate as to the intention of what we were voting on? Um, if not, then we can just accept the minutes and we can make any modifications going forward um, to give precision or additional direction to what we voted on last week. That's my take on it. Um, Is anybody feeling like that is not a, a good way to move forward? Okay. Jake, I, I think you're like the parliamentary uh, nerd. So do you have any, any thoughts on that? And I mean no, I nerd in the kindest way. Most respect. Yeah, no, I think that that makes sense as a motion, Mr. Chair, if you wanted to, to move that, that would, I mean, well, I guess you're right. We don't necessarily need a motion if we're all comfortable with, with that. Because if the language in the minutes, if if the goal is that we're going to specifically clarify the language in the minutes tonight, then I think we can move forward safely. And I think also through this conversation, just informally, staff has a pretty good understanding of what our yeah. intention are is and what what our goals are. So yeah, I think moving forward would be perfectly in order. Great. Yeah, I don't have any concerns that we're not going to get to our desired outcome if we accept the minutes as presented. And, and, and Brian, I'm not the um, Robert's Rules nerd, but you do have a motion on the floor. Yes. That would be accepting the minutes, and then we've had discussion about that. And so it yeah. sounds like you would want to move forward and, and see if that motion will pass. Yep. Let's go ahead and uh, vote on the motion to approve the minutes as presented. All those in favor, please. Okay. Any opposed, please raise your hand. Okay, great. We can move forward then. Thank you, everybody. So Karen or Alberto, who's going to take us through the next steps here? It is EM. Mr. Mendoza. Okay. He doesn't look um, like he so, knows that it was EM. No, no, I was wondering, can, um, um, can I share my screen, Nicole? I, I just want them to see the, the document that I created um, and, and then reference back to it so they understand where this fits. All right, so I'm going to share the packet. Um, okay, so what you're looking at is the minutes that we just discussed. And approved then so I want to start here um, so I'm gonna kind of set set the groundwork and Karen you can jump in whenever and if anyone has questions I can't see everybody so just speak up because I, I can only see four people on my little strip right now so um, so basically I took that you know I went back and I listened to the meeting and I um, took that mandate to, to add a question to the uh, human services funding application. And I will say that it is the, one of the most difficult things to do um, because adding a one question around racial equity or equity in, in itself is a very challenging thing to do. And after some back and forth with Karen, I, I, I did draft some, some options and I sent it to Karen and then we, had it back and forth. The way that we decided to go is um, we would like to use 
the GEAR racial equity tool that's in your packet. We want to add that to the resource center of the application. And in the instructions, we want to ask agencies as they are answering the questions, because one of the things I noticed is that in reality, a lot of the questions in that racial equity tool are similar to the questions that we ask in the application. There are some similarities. Uh, the biggest difference, of course, is that the racial equity tool has a lens of racial equity in it. Um, and so we wanna share that with the agencies and ask them to consider that to inform their answers and ask them to think beyond just racial equity and, and think about equity in a broader term as they're answering these questions. At the same time, I wanted to honor what the board had asked. And so as Karen and I discussed where the question around equity in the application directly belonged, we came down to adding a question to the number three target population. So, and unfortunately when I said it to, so in my, when I look at my Word document, from the word please share, that to me is in red because um, uh, that is new. That was not in the question before. The question ended in the described the specific population served by the program. And so I added the please share strategies the program will implement to ensure target populations are served equitably. Um, it, it, like again, it, it, it was a challenge to, to boil down such a huge topic of equity into one question. But I feel comfortable in having the agencies use the racial equity tool to inform their answers on the application as they're writing them to use that tool uh, to help them understand the value of equity. And I was gonna add that to the instructions as well. So that's kind of where we landed and I'd love to have feedback and discussion from the board. Thank you, Alberto. Okay, feedback for Alberto on, uh, I think there's two elements here. One is using the Government Alliance on Racial and Equity form, including that in the application uh, to assist, as a tool to assist uh, applicants on evaluating the racial equity question or the equity question in general. And then the second part is, what do you think about the language of equity included in the application and where it is included on question three? Why don't we start? Go ahead, Diana. So I was just going to say, I like the language in, in question three that you've added. I think it's nicely broad and open ended and gives them a lot of opportunity to discuss their goals. Um, and I think my concept of the equity question was very broad as well, and that we weren't limiting it to um, racial justice issues and that we, I was contemplating, you know, are they equitably applied to, you know, the LGBTQ community? Are they providing access to seniors, people with disabilities? So I was, I'm happy to see that the question is open that way. I think that leaves it um, so that the plans or the programs can really develop that. And I think providing them some guidance with the GARE questionnaire is good as long as they don't think that the question is only about racial justice issues, which is obviously huge and very important, but not exclusive. Right, and that's why my, when I write the instructions, I wanna make sure that I make that very clear. Thank you. Uh, yes, Anne? I don't know, I'm just not sure if that's big enough for the question, you know? equitable. I don't know if that can be perceived as financial or I mean I want it to be more inclusive to other populations like race. I don't know. It just seems a little, it is broad but I'm not sure if everyone is going to get it. Like if 
El Comité looked at that, what are they going to think? Thanks, Anne. We've got Karen and then Caitlin and then Council Member Christensen. Nicole, could you unmute? Oh, I got it. I got it. Um, there you go, Karen. We need to define what equitable means, I would think. We need like a definition. What does equity, what does it mean? So does it mean, you know, everything or so it's like, that's just such a broad word. What does it mean exactly? So that's what I'm asking. Okay, thank you. Caitlin? Um, yeah, I agree with Anne and Karen around that. And one of the things I'm seeing in the, the GARE questions that might help uh, inform that. Um, so right now we're saying, the question is, please um, describe how it will be delivered equ equitably. And I wonder if the question in like step two, number two, um, what does it tell you about, uh, what does data tell you about existing inequities and how are you gonna address root causes of that? And I wonder if something that's a little more specific rather than making sure this is gonna be delivered equitably, um, asking them to talk about how the program may be addressing root causes of inequity and to describe what those inequities are um, so that it still leaves it open to talk about race gender um, lgbtq issues age um, any any sort of that but really diving into like addressing the root causes of it because um, i think that's really what we're getting at is we want it delivered equitably but we also want to see that folks are thinking about the root causes of some of those inequities um, and I think that's kind of why we were thinking that it fit under so many different things is that there are inequities in all of our different buckets. So I wonder, I'm just thinking that we could maybe be more specific there to get to what the inequities are that they're addressing. Thank you, Caitlin. Council Member Christensen and then Jake. Um, thank you. Um, and thank you, Eliberto, for including this um, this document of uh, the GARE document. Um, my question is whether, I, I, because I think that having um, people look at this document and talking among themselves will help them focus on issues maybe that they have considered and haven't considered, but at least they'll be able to convey them to us better. I was wondering if they will be filling out this document or just using this as a uh, hmm, something to inform themselves. Will they be turning in something like this or just using that to inform them? Will everybody be getting this, uh, this um, two page document? So, Councilor Christian, um, it'll be available to any every application applicant that applies. I I didn't. So I I think um, I didn't think we were going to ask them to fill it out and send it back in, uh, for a couple of reasons. One is, I mean, that would add extra burden to you all to, if it was going to become a part of reviewing, and then two, you know, it it, it does add extra. Um, effort for the agency to have to fill out a, a, another document as along with all the things that we're asking already. And then I think the third thing is when you actually look at the questions, there are a lot of similarities. Um, I think our questions and the applications are well thought through. Um, and I think that they, the, while the GARE document definitely has some nuances around equity, I think there, there's still a lot of similarities that look at how well have you researched? How well, for example, there's a piece on engagement. How well have you engaged the clients in implementation or participants in implementation? So I just think that 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 the Gary document was a, is a good tool, but not necessarily a, a requirement. Okay, I, I understand that because you know we we're already giving them a lot of paperwork. <laughs> they don't need more paperwork. But rather than have it available to them, I would do the you know where they have to pull it out of us. I would have 
a push thing where we give it to them so that everybody's got this so they can consider this. I think Karen hit the nail on the head with the, what do we, how do we define equity? And I think this helps people uh, get that and, and get that they don't have to go to this. We're going to give it to them because we're really serious about it. So um, I, my suggestion would be to just send this along as a PDF to everybody so they get that we're not kidding. <laughs> we, we mean it. So, uh, Karen, do you have a clarification on, on Council Member Christensen's question? Not, uh, not necessarily a clarification, but I think just to add, so, um, so, so Polly, we did, we did go back and forth about whether to, um, to have this be a required, um, to have them fill out the form. You know, so that we, so as Ellie Berta, we glad it went back and forth uh, because we think that that GARE document is probably the best one that we've seen that really helps. Um, I mean, it's, it's a document that we are to be using as City of Longmont employees for programs that we are offering to the community. It's to be a, a guiding framework for, as we are thinking about all the things that we offer in the city, um, how do we begin to think about, you know, is, can everyone have access? Is the way that we're providing the service? Is how we're communicating about the service? Um, is it something, is, is, are we doing that in a way that everyone can access the service? Are we leaving anybody out by the way we are delivering the particular program or service? So, so we did go back and forth about whether we would make, whether we would make this a requirement to complete that or, or put that in and reference it, and maybe we can reference it more strongly uh, as, as far as the, the, the document itself, because it, it, be it will be in the resource um, center, but we certainly can reference it or even send it out as a, a PDF if that would be helpful. So we end up landing on it being a framework um, and to give folks ideas, because we do think that, because we get, we often get general answers to these the questions that we've asked in the past. And, and I think we do want more specific answers. We do want to see evidence that folks really looked at the data and the data is informing how they are providing their service um, in an equitable fashion. So we, we went back and forth all the way around as about the, you know, the best way to do this. So we, we didn't rest it. So we, we are really interested in other, in your feedback and what you think we really should be doing here. I, I really don't think that we should require everybody to fill this out. I'm just saying, just send it to them so they have it available right. so, so they don't have to hunt around for it. It's more in their face, yeah. Yeah, so, so that they, they have that, everybody has it available and um, they can use that to answer question number three and uh, it'll be helpful to them and it'll be helpful for them to analyze things because you know not every agency some agencies are very very targeted on the people that they are going to help so inherently they are not uh, broadly equitable maybe i mean they are not making sure they have got 50 things checked off they are a targeted uh, they're taking care of a targeted group so they don't necessarily deal with transportation. I mean, all the things on this list. So it doesn't make sense for everybody to have to fill out all this paperwork. And in, in addition, it's more work for uh, you and <laughs> Alberto and everybody else to fill out something that's not really necessary to be filled out in the first place. Thanks. Thank you, Jake. Thanks for your patience. Go ahead. I appreciate it, Mr. Chair. Um, I, I just want to circle back a little bit to Caitlin's point because I think it's a great one, and I really appreciate her her thoughts on this. This was some of my concern in our conversation last week about the need for a separate bucket and all that, and I won't relitigate that conversation, but, but my concern was generally that by not doing that, we make the issue a little small, and we make the, uh, the way our process handles the issue a little bit small. So I think, but Caitlin did a really good job of, of getting to the point that I was going to make. And I was going to ask somebody if they had wording um, that could tackle kind of that specific issue that we aren't necessarily just, at least for me, I'm not just necessarily concerned about equitable delivery of services. 
I want these agencies to be thinking about how their operation and how the service they provide generally impacts the equity issue. So I think Caitlin really got to the crux of what I was, was going to mention, and I would hope that she can, can think about some specific wording changes uh, to bring into the, the question that she'd be willing to potentially move, and I'd, I'd be all over that. So thanks, Mr. Chair. Thanks, Jake. Graham? Um, I would support that string of thought um, and suggest the um, step four question be slightly modified and ask, what are your strategies for advancing equity in all its forms um, to make it broader, more inclusive? Um, and then it has teeth in virtue of the answers uh, resulting in scores, which result in, in the distribution of funds. Uh, my concern with the question three as, as worded now is it qualifies it with target population, which in and of itself sort of presents this back door. So if we say, well, how are you equitably serving your target population? Well, maybe the whole issue of target population in and of itself is an expression of inequity um, in that particular case. And so that, that language worries me um, a little bit, but maybe I have an overly suspicious Mind. Well, I mean, what, what if my target population was white Anglo-Saxon, you know, heterosexual males? So, like, then, yeah, we're equitably distributing services to those people. Like, I, I'm not going to want to give you points for that, even if you're really doing a good job of equitably delivering content to that target population. So I, I think just make it super broad uh, and, you know, how, what are your strategies for um, improving equity? in all its ways and in everything you do. Something just really broad, so. Thanks, Graham. Go ahead, Alberto. So I like that, Graham. Um, I, I, I think the target population, though, the reason that we have that is because we understand that, remember, this is a pretty, this is a pretty broad funding base, right? We're funding all sorts of things. So for example, Boulder Valley Women Health and who they're funding, is not going to be the same that um, somebody else may be funding. Um, for example, Hope, right? They may it, it's a it, it may be a very different population, and so we understand that. And we what we want to know is that, given what the program is intended to do, and who is it intended to help, how is the program? ensuring that within that population, so for example, let's say that it is intended to, to, to work with immigrants that are learning English. How is that program being equitable that it's not only Spanish speaking immigrants, but how are immigrants from Nepal or Germany or, you know, so, so it, it really is about ensuring that if the target of is people learning English, how does everyone who is learning English get served in a way that 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 changes their their situation thank you Alberto Ann and then Caitlin so I think that's good but are we going to be able to ask agencies questions during this funding round so you know I think we could say to that agency do you also serve people from other countries other than just spanish-speaking population i guess i don't even know how we're going to go forward with the funding stuff are we going to do it virtually like how is all that going to work maybe i just missed out on it but if we could ask questions then it would be better Thank you, Anne. Caitlin? Um, yes, yeah, so I wanted to make a suggestion. I don't think I'm ready to make a motion for this, but um, a suggestion for a way that we could incorporate some of, the que some of what we're talking about. Um, so for question two, it currently says program description. Describe the specific activities that the program will provide and the anticipated benefits that will result for the program. Um, I was thinking something along the lines of please identify what, if any, historical or current inequities are being addressed and how the program addresses the root causes of these inequities. And then to complement that in the program evaluation, 
adding a sentence at the end. So this is number seven. Um, please also include how you will measure or evaluate the impact on the inequities identified in the program description. Um, so that we tie it both into describing the program, but also in how they will evaluate that they are meeting that objective of the program. Um, so I, I mostly wanted to throw that out there to see if others have thoughts on other ways we might incorporate it, or if that maybe gets a little closer to what we're trying to get folks to answer um, here. Yeah. I just know from the past that's going to be complicated for agencies, especially small agencies. I think it's going to be difficult for them, especially agencies that don't have a lot of money. Which part do you mean? Um, the second part that you were talking about, the how are they going to measure that? Oof, I don't know. Eliberto, do you have an answer to that? No, not necessarily, but I, I, I think the, to your point, and actually what I was going to add is, so a couple of things. One, this will, this will be the first time that we do this, and so we'll, we'll, we'll probably have to extend some grace um, because folks may, they may be confused, and I may be answering tons of questions from agencies during that time. Um, and then two, evaluation, um, I think that, I, that it is a good question to add. And so I'll give you an example. I've had some great conversations with Second Wind Fund um, that does, and, one, and I had a meeting with them and their, and their board chair, um, and um, they showed me they they're doing a good job of tracking who's using their services and um you know they had a large latino population of youth that were contemplating suicide right i think it it, it, it was a large percentage and so when i asked them i said so what when you see this what are you thinking about as far as how you deliver services as where, where do you recruit therapists what does it mean for, for um, your thoughts on how do you support these children, these youth beyond the, the, the sessions? And so I think that that made them think. I, I'm not sure if they're measuring it well, but we didn't, we didn't go into that deep of, but I hope that what these will do is, is make agencies think. I think there will be confusion any way you look at it. This is a new topic for a lot of folks. Not that they haven't been working on equity issues for a long time, but to put it into words is gonna be new for many of the agencies. Um, so I think we'll have to have some grace. And at the same time, you know, I don't know who said it, but yeah, we do mean business about this and we want you to think about it, uh, even if we do extend grace. Thank you for that, Alberto. And I, I share your uh, your recognition that this is a new track and we're going to learn a lot. You know, we're probably going to learn 60% of what we wish we would have known in the first year and then have incremental improvements over the rest of the time. Um, so we, I, we know that perfection is not what we're going to get, no matter how much we want it. Uh, I do just want to say I share Graham's thought on the idea of the semantics of target population. And so I wonder if in question three, target population, where we say describe the specific population served by the program, if maybe that's not a place to say, somehow tease out the question of uh, how did you, you know, how do you evaluate your target through the lens of equity? So for instance, if, if Graham's program came back with, I'm targeting a 56 year old uh, white Anglo-Saxon male that lives on Carolina Street in Longmont, uh, which if there's a big check, you know, we can talk about uh, might apply, but that, that would not, he'd have a hard time answering through the lens of equity how he defined his population. Um, so that's just, I don't have a solution to the thought, but 
Uh, Council Member Christensen. Um, I do think it's important. I, I think maybe the, the term target population is kind of weird. It implies that, I mean, I, I see what Graham is saying here. It sort of implies that, um, I think it's an odd term to be using. But I, I do, but it is true that, um, maybe we could use a different term. Um, we fund, as Eliberto said, we fund such a variety of groups and they do have a population that they're going to serve that is not necessarily, um, well, these are agencies. They are not businesses. They don't go out and drum up services. They don't go out and drum up business because, you know, people come to them because they need help. They don't go out and try to find uh, uh, people who need help. And different groups, different cultures, different groups have very different ways of asking for help. Most people don't ask for help. We know this from surveys that have been done. About one out of people, one out of eight people, uh, we did a survey um, with Housing and Human Services a few years ago that's, that, uh, or Karen did a survey, I'm not sure whether it was through this. Um, one out of eight people who are eligible for services applies. The rest don't apply because most Americans of all groups have been taught that it's weak to ask for help that it's shameful to ask for help. It's shameful to need help. So in many ways, um, you're not getting a, an overview of the culture of, of America anyway. You're ask, getting people who really are, I think, quite desperate for help or they wouldn't be asking for help in the first place. And so, to try to put a layer of um, expecting it to be equally distributed is a little odd, if you see what I mean, in that um, I come from a long line of farmers. We never ask for help, no matter how far down we get. There are a lot of cultures where, for instance, um, a lot of very traditional cultures would never ask for help with their elderly because they would feel ashamed that they couldn't take care of their parents. And yet there are elderly people who need care and uh, their, their kids can't take care of them the way they need to be taken care of and yet they won't ask for help. So I do think it's important for us to keep in mind that um, these are agencies that are not businesses. They're not going out and drumming up business. So to expect them to have an absolutely equal distribution of um, different races, different cultures, different genders, different religions is a lot, but we want them to try. We want them to really think about this and be sure that they are try that they're not discriminating against anybody and that they are actually trying to find people who need help and um, it, it is difficult to figure out how uh, how to do this and be fair to them and be you know given that not everybody asks for help even though they desperately need it Sorry, thank you, Polly. Anne and then Caitlin. Karen, did you raise your hand? Okay. And then I think we just need to move on on this because I think we can get bogged down a lot on this. And I think I really trust Aliberto to come up with a question that will make sense. And I think his question is good, but just a little bit more teeth in it. Um, if you can just do something with a little bit more Aliberto, but I trust that you can do that. And then I think we should just move on. 
Okay. Thank you, Ann. Caitlin? Um, I definitely hear the need to, to move on. I want to, um, I think something that um, Councilwoman Christensen said there at the end is that these organizations, um, they're not businesses, they're not going out and recruiting, but these types of questions point to things that are structural inequities in terms of how services are delivered. So if, for example, um, you know, I just think about the, the large Spanish speaking population in Longmont. And if an organization is targeting, for example, um, low income or children, but they are way out of whack comparatively to Longmont's population in terms of Spanish speakers that are served by it, that points to a potential issue in how they are delivering that program. Um, if they're not providing Spanish translation services, they're not provide, you know, and I don't necessarily expect that every organization is going to do everything, but if, you know, if we have a whole bunch of agencies that are primarily serving, um, you know, the white Anglo-Saxon, you know, population because they don't have the structural pieces to support um, a large percentage of our population, then that's a problem. And so I think the idea of these questions is really to get folks thinking about, you know, is, is your target population or are the demographics of who you're serving really the full demographics of who could be served based on what you say your program goals are? Um, you know, if you say your program goals are to serve, you know, low income children, but then the only low income children you're hitting is, you know, such a small percentage and it's very racially or ethnically or language, you know, skewed compared to the population. There might be something that needs to be improved in terms of that program delivery to make sure it's getting to the folks who need it. Even, you know, there's cultural things. There may be ways that they're thinking about it. So, um, I think that it's really important to ask the questions to get folks thinking about it. This is the first year. No one's going to get a perfect. I don't think anyone is expecting perfection. I think it's really just to start these conversations and to get folks thinking about how both the agencies and we and the city um, can be thinking about these um, deeper questions of how, how we make sure that the right folks are getting access to services. Thank you, Caitlin. Karen? So um, in the spirit of Anne's urging, um, you know, it seems like what, what I have heard is that um, generally there has been a suggestion to modify questions two, four, and seven. Um, so Caitlin had some specific language for questions two and seven. I think Graham threw out some general question, general suggestion for uh, item number four, question number four, um, and that we not try to just have, and that we actually keep the target population question as it as it was, as and and not put the share the um, strategies for equitable equitably serving the target population. So it sounded like. We want to have more equity questions or equity um, follow up in questions two, four, and seven, and that we also take a stab at defining what we mean by equity um, in kind of in that overview, and that we have the, the GARE framework document available for agencies to really reference and get some more ideas about the, the framework. So, so that's kind of what I heard people, her advisory board members really, um, you know, talk about. Okay, thank you. Um, one comment and then a question. The only thing that occurred to me is on question three, you know, I think what's challenging with target population is it is a relatively accurate term because we think of it in terms of needs. Agencies target populations of specific needs. And uh, so, Typically, we don't think about it in terms of race, ethnicity, uh, gender. Um, so I was almost wondering if really that second part of that question wouldn't be something more like, please share strategies the program will implement to ensure target populations are served regardless of race, ethnicity, and gender or something like that, right? Really just calling it out. Okay, I, that is not a point for discussion. I just wanted to throw that out there. 
um, is in terms of what you, Karen and Eliberto, are wanting from us in this meeting is the guidance, Karen, that you're hearing adequate? Do you need a decision or uh, what do you need? So uh, I'll go first and I'll let Karen. So what I would need, I mean, I actually agree with, with um, Karen. I think um, the suggested verbiage that was suggested by Graham and Caitlin are, is helpful. Um, I would just need that verbiage so that I could put it into the application. I think those questions, um, with the understanding that folks are not going to get it perfect, um, I'm fine adding those questions to, you know, to the to, or adding those ad ad additions to those questions. I just need the verbiage. Um, and I would imagine, um, so either we could have, well, I think we've captured it in the recording, you, you know, so. Nicole can weigh in on whether so so I think we're recording this we have that we could certainly ask Caitlin to um, and, and Graham to um, and probably has written down her comments I, I don't know whether Graham has or, or not but we certainly have that in the um, you know in the recordings that we can just take that information um, and and make the revisions to those three questions um you know based on the the input that you provided and and because i think because i think it does get to because we talked about the importance of you know having whatever those strategies be more data informed and then you know you know because and program evaluation is something that we're paying more attention to and um and you know how are they continuing to look at um, program evaluation as it relates to, to equity. So I think we've captured it um, in the notes. I'm going to say Nicole has captured that. I'm sure she has. And, um, and if, if you were all good with us taking that and moving forward, then I think we just want to make sure that we are asking what will be helpful for the advisory board yeah. to really evaluate and get a better idea of how Agencies that we are funding are, are providing service with an equity lens. They're planning for it. They know something about it. They're looking at it. They're paying attention to it. So okay. we want to do what you think will be helpful. Okay. Thank you. So from my perspective, um, th this has really been a helpful discussion because this is our first foray into including this kind of topic. So I think it's important that we really kind of think through how that happens. Um, I also know we don't want to micromanage staff and uh, it is going to be an imperfect process and there does have to be a lot of grace given to everybody uh, to really move this thing forward and make sure it has an impact. So sounds like we're at a good place. Jake, are you just stretching or do you, uh, you're good. Okay. All right. Um, okay. Any other discussion I think we can move on if it's good with staff. Okay, let's go ahead and move on then. Thank you. I think moving on is going to the next to other business question five. So unless there's oh. any what? I don't <laughs> So unless there's anything else, I'm, I, you know, Anne asked about, so how the heck are we going to do it, you know, approach it this year? Um, you know, we really haven't talked about that. I imagine that we are doing, um, we're probably doing some kind of Zoom meetings. I mean, we don't know. Um, but so we, we're just trying to get the application completed and out the door. And, um, and then certainly I think we can come back for our, what are we, is this uh, September? So for our October meeting um, and, and kind of uh, pound out what that hearing health orders are at that point in time. So can, can I share my screen chair so I can share the, it, it's not updated, but I want to remind folks of the original yeah, time. Yeah. 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 Can I do that? Please. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and share. 
Uh, so this, I and I was supposed to up, and I have it updated. Um, so as you can see, uh, we're not too far off of time. Um, we wanted to get this out by this Friday, um, and and that has not happened. So we might have to push this date a little back. Um, and, and really, this we had already decided this was going to be pushed back. We weren't going to be too concerned about this 115 date um, to give us more time for uh, this process right here. Right? We were gonna we were gonna give ourselves more time, maybe in, even into December, to do this. Um, so I, I I think it will probably be a Zoom meeting. Um, I think that Zoom allows us to have waiting rooms, which is helpful, um, and we can bring people in. I, it, it'll be more work for Nicole as she brings people in and out due to the the timing. Um, but I think that that is is what we can do. But I just want to show that we are we are not necessarily um, too off on the original time frame that we set. So yeah. I can probably get everything done by midweek next week and maybe send it out by or have it i'm going to be out next week thursday and friday but i could probably have it set in the system to be sent out on the on friday and we just Great. push things back a week so how will that work with people who are if we approve the recommendations on january i will no longer be here and new people may be coming on does that matter? Well, we don't approve the recommendations. That's the that's council who approves recommendations. Okay, okay. That's so we, we, we will have our deliberation meeting in December. We'll, we can still try to aim for that. Mm -hmm. um, but, but yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, I, I would ask that we, I think the schedule looks good. Let's try to, you know, I know we're gonna lose a few days here and there and, and where we can, we'll, try to compress that to stick to the schedule as much as possible on all the remaining blocks. Uh, I'm certain we're not gonna be meeting in December uh, in person. So uh, Nicole will have incredible Zoom skills after this year. Yeah, you're definitely pushed for that raise, Nicole. <laughs> Um, or the holiday bonus. Yeah. <laughs> and just to reiterate, the, you know, are really critical because these, the, the big piece of this then is to make sure that our evaluations align with these questions. So making sure that we're, we're good with how these questions are asked becomes really important. But um, this is great. So the, there's no need to talk about the evaluation portion of this. Is that correct? So, so I think that will be something, I mean, Alberto, we, I mean, we've already worked at aligning the evaluation. I think we talked about that earlier with the advisory board. So we wanted to make it easier to evaluate so that the evaluation tool that you use follows along with the, you know, with the actual application. So that mm -hmm. makes it easier for you to rate it. Given we've made a few modifications in the application, we'll have to go back and, and look at modifying the evaluation tool. But I think we did bring that back to y'all earlier. And I think we were good with those, um, with those okay. changes. So I would say that probably what, um, what we'll be asking Nicole to do in the, the fairly near future is to start um, working on calendars and, and getting the, um, the hearing schedule set up so that you can get that on your calendars and 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 we can um, we can be ready to you know to rock and roll and lock in those those dates because we realize that we are doing this during November December which is you know usually a, a pretty busy time for folks so. yeah yeah not this year yeah. okay get your flu shots yeah. Thank you. Thank you for the reminder, Anne. Okay, so is there, Shakita, you're one board member we haven't had a chance to hear from. Any thoughts or questions before we start closing it up? 
No, I think um, and I agree with uh, Caitlin and Graham, and I totally believe that Eliberto will arrange it to how we want it to be said. He know where we're coming from. He knows what the out what outcome we are looking for. So I I believe he can do it. I have right. faith in you, Eliberto. <laughs> Thanks, Shakita. And, and no, no pressure. Try. No pressure. <laughs> I, I will try. I will try my hardest to get it right. Listen, if, if you don't get it exactly like we want, it's no big deal. We will just be silently disappointed. <laughs> he will get it done. His end of year bonus will go to Nicole. <laughs> uh, this is, it's going to be bad office dynamics. Don't eat any banana bread from Nicole. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Uh, so, any other business? No. Okay. With no other business, I'm revisiting my agenda here. Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Okay. With that, the meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Oh, and by the way, I just wanted to thank you all for, for making time for this meeting. I know you're all busy, and, uh, but it, it's so valuable, and I love hearing your feedback. So thank you very much for, for attending and being part of it. All right. Everybody have a great rest of your week. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thanks. Karen? Oh, she left.